over the last year and a half or so, we've been working with a team and Manitoba Renal Program has started as Smitted GFR reporting. Um, we've just started in November 2010. It's sort of a rollout. All the, Manito all the Winnipeg DSM labs are now automatically reporting GFR when you order serum creatinine. It comes up estimated GFR with a little blur, but referring you to our website and our pathways. Um, and we're likely the entire province should be on in the various rural labs by the next, the next month or two. In fact, most are now. This has been the standard of care recommended by all the major national and international guidelines bodies for a few years now. I know BC was the first in Canada, one of the first in the world. It started in 2004, um, but we're getting on late, but certainly it's been a very uh, well-coordinated strategy here in terms of trying to get all the you know, primary care people around the table to design effective, efficient pathways to refer patients to the renal program and really educate groups such as this on why we're doing it. So a lot of other jurisdictions didn't do it in quite a, such a coordinated way, and I think it's very important when you introduce a tool like this to do it in a very planned, coordinated way and evaluate it. Why estimated GFR? So that's the question we always get. We've had creatinine for 30, 40 years. It seems to work just fine. We understand what it is, and now you're bringing some new number that's just really a derivation of creatinine. So all the GFR is is creatinine adjusted for age and sex. So why are we changing things? The universal standard for now defining CKD, so you saw those graphs that I showed you, it, there is a method to the madness there. So all these other terms are no longer acceptable. It's just CKD and what stage of CKD you're at. So it's certainly a more meaningful terminology for clinicians and I think especially for patients. So patients, when you tell them your creatinine is 300, they say, okay, it's a great number, but I don't really know what it means. But when they see your, creat your GFR is 21 and you actually have 21% of your kidney function approximately and you need to start dialysis at 10, it hits home a lot more. So creatinine is not a really a great way to explain things to anybody, but GFR, I think clinicians understand it better, patients understand it better, and again, it, it has shown to improve referral rates and so on a lot more than, than just creatinine alone. Um, CKD stages, as defined by eGFR, correlate more closely with complications as a result of CKD, including mortality. So you saw the mortality stuff, but actually if you look at complications as a result of CKD, things such as anemia requiring EPO and iron therapy, calcium phosphate, PTH abnormalities, and things of that nature. It really, there are significant step function increases in, in the patients with those complications um, when you get into later stages, so stage three, stage four, stage five. So those numbers were not just arbitrarily invented. They actually do mean something on a sort of epidemiologic level. There are risks associated with EGFR reporting. So because you're actually not really changing numbers, you're just inventing a new marker, there's maybe some over-labeling stigma, so that 80-year-old lady that's had a hot creatinine of 110 for the last five years, and she's stable, she's not gonna progress. And in fact, creatinine on the, on the lab uh, range of normals was normal, and now she's got a GFR of 32, and suddenly she's got chronic kidney disease. That may be a worry, but that's why it's very important to educate patients that we haven't actually changed anything, we've just changed their risk profile and so on. Um, insurance companies are a big thing, so when you get young guys who are big weightlifters and large muscle mass and their creatinine's already high and their EGFR reads is 55, you know what, there may be some kind of signal there, but the formula wasn't really validated in that population, so it's hard to explain. Some insurance companies have actually said no to things like life insurance and disability and so on on that basis, and that's unfortunate, and that's those are the things we bears need to overcome, but it doesn't mean that the whole population should suffer as a result of that, so there's just some questions may be arrived at because of that. So we're going to get into a couple of cases, and I think we have three cases here that I'm going to speak uh, about first, and then are going to get my interdisciplinary team involved in uh, with after that, because this sort of simulates the three typical referrals we get. So as I said, we met with, uh, uh, when we designed these pathways as a result of you know, getting EGFR up and running, uh, Manitoba Health sponsored a program called Bridging Generalist and Specialist Care. We had seven nephrologists and seven primary care practitioners meet to design efficient, easy to understand pathways to get patients into the MRP system. And I think it's been a real success. So those pathways are available, again, outside of our booth and on the website. But this is...